from prestigious abodes boasting secret rooms utilized in the harboring of enslaved individuals on their journeys north, whose halls are still protected by the ghosts of abolitionists long since past, to strategically placed manor homes overlooking multiple escape routes, on which those fleeing southern plantations were able to take their first breaths of free air, and where the souls of those who took refuge within still linger. Are you ready to explore some of the most actively haunted stops on America's legendary Underground Railroad? Number 5. The John Brown Farm State Historic Site the John Brown Farm State Historic Site, located off of John Brown Road, out of North Elba, just southeast of Lake Placid in New York, is a historic abode and grave site harboring exceeding fame for its acting as residence to instrumental abolitionist leader John Brown, who saw countless lives on their ways to freedom. Historically, in 1849, the Brown family would arrive to North Elba and would live out of rented space for two years while educating African Americans on their farming techniques. Later, in 1855, John and family would return to North Elba, where he would construct the home that we know today as a place for his family to reside safely while he and his four eldest sons were battling slavery in Kansas. Sadly, on December 2nd of 1859, a failed raid on Harper's Ferry would result in Brown's execution, after which his widow Mary would return his body to their farm for burial by December 8th. Following John's passing, and despite his wishes, his family would be unable to remain on site and would end up leaving the farm in 1860 and later selling in 1865. In 1896, the property was purchased by the state, opened up as a public space, and has remained as such into the present, offering a wealth of educational materials surrounding the Brown family and their part in the building of a more just America, alongside tours through the warmer months. Very simply, most local legends claim the whole of the John Brown farm is haunted by the spirits of the Brown family and of those who followed his honorable and stalwart principles in life. A small burying grounds on site holds not just the grave of John, but the reinterred remains of his sons and of several comrades who fought and died at his side at Harper's Ferry, and it's believed that between John, Mary, their 13 children, and all associated parties, that the property harbors its fair share of ghostly energies, with those exploring its bounds reporting disembodied footsteps through leaf piles in the fall, voices in full conversation heard from empty spaces, and encounters with a range of full-bodied apparitions in 19th century clothing. The most famous stories to emerge from this farm are those detailing encounters with the ghost of John Brown himself, who has reportedly held full conversations with select living before either walking straight through nearby solid walls or vanishing entirely. Number 4. The John Hosack House the John Hosack House, located off of West Prospect Avenue in Ottawa, Illinois, is a historic abode widely recognized as one of the most beautiful residences in the whole of the city that's largely renowned for its part as a prominent stop on the Underground Railroad. Historically, this house was first constructed in 1854 under Scottish-born businessman John Hosack, who moved from Ottawa to Chicago after working on the Illinois and Michigan Canal. Hosack, who was in strong opposition of slavery, would be the center for a number of wild accounts, and even hid so many as 13 fleeing individuals in his house until they could reach their next few stations. In a famous 1860 case involving former fugitive enslaved individual Jim Gray, Hosack and other Ottawans were actually convicted in federal court for violating the fugitive slave law. In 1873, Hosack would lose his eyesight and would retire from his lumber and grain business, and in 1891, the legendary and quite mad Scotsman would pass on. Following John's death, his beloved abode would be left to his daughter and son-in-law, Mr. and Mrs. John Edwin Scott, after which it would change hands a number of times before landing under the ownership of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas R. Godfrey. 
In the present, the two-story John Hosack house remains a private residence, and while its owners are very aware of interest in the site and are not as strict regarding their passers-by policy as some of the other private spaces we've covered, as usual guys, we're going to have to ask our viewers to avoid encroaching on their personal space, because really, just imagine how much traffic you'd want rolling past your own domain. Over its many years, the Hosack House has been shrouded in a number of classic ghost stories, with countless guests and several owners reporting activity they just couldn't explain across its bounds, including disembodied footsteps heard from empty spaces and usually at night, whispers that emanate from darkened rooms, and extreme cold spots. After dark, those passing by the house have described sighting otherworldly lights that flit around through the upper windows, and several have told of silhouettes dressed in old-fashioned clothing by shuffling about. Lastly, the ghost of John Hosack himself has been sighted walking at a relaxed pace around the property, donning a look of utter satisfaction for moments, some say at the country he helped shape before fading from the visible spectrum. Number 3. The Hitchcock House the Hitchcock House, located just to the west of Lewis off of 567th Lane in Cass County, Iowa, is a historic abode turned museum that's notable for its construction under Reverend George B. Hitchcock, who utilized his property in the harboring and transport of escaped and formerly enslaved individuals seeking their freedom. Historically, this prestigious abode was first erected in 1856, as previously mentioned, under the progressive Congregationalist minister himself, and it wasn't merely coincidence that its chosen location had it placed overlooking two of the more major east-west trails sporting ferry crossings. Hitchcock was heavily involved in American abolitionism, ingraining himself as an integral part of the Underground Railroad, and he would use his new estate to provide sanctuary to those fleeing what he deemed the ultimate injustice. Interestingly enough, when the war was over and the property had served its purpose, he would vacate its premises in 1865. The Reverend's legendary hideaway would include intricately constructed basement chambers complete with a cooking fire and necessities, all accessible via an entrance likely concealed by a cabinet, and it's speculated that during searches, he would hide the very people he gladly would have died for within. Over the years, the old estate was passed through a number of owners, and for a time, its lands would be utilized as a farm until 1966, when the state purchased the site, ushering a series of renovations and rest restorations through the 1980s and launching tour services in 1992. The Hitchcock House remains open to the public under management of the county and offers a wealth of educational materials pertaining to the history of the Hitchcock family and to the Underground Railroad as a whole. Quite classically, the whole of this aged premises is rumored to be haunted by the souls of both George himself and by those formerly enslaved who, for the first time, experienced small freedoms during their stays, and many frequenting the house's bounds have reported objects spied moving about on their own, displays found rearranged inexplicably, and doors that swing open and closed by themselves as if someone unseen is passing briskly through their port. Within the basement chamber, some have described the feelings of anxiety, fear, and dread, but also the bustling tingle of hope and of love. And throughout the house, several have told of instances in which they were followed around by shadowy figures that some claim are the specters of the reverend's house hands, who'd likely have kept their eyes on all those welcomed onto the property during times of inspection. Several informal investigations of the museum have yielded high EMF levels, crystal clear EVPs, and odd temperature fluctuations, while other accounts have noted lights that flick on and off randomly, the feelings of being watched, followed, or touched by something unseen, and encounters with the manifestation of what's believed to be old George himself, who's usually sighted hurrying around corners or just out of sight. Number 2. The Kelton House Museum and Garden The Kelton House Museum and Garden, located off of East Town Street in Columbus, Ohio, is a historic abode turned educational venue that's renowned as a highly significant stop on the Underground Railroad, and that's collection promotes the understanding of customs, arts, and of daily life through the region in the 19th century. 
Historically, in 1852, this residence was constructed under Fernando Cortez Kelton and his wife Sofia, who were avid abolitionists and who planned on utilizing their domicile as a stop on the Underground Railroad. Notably, in 1864, the Keltons would take in Martha Hartway, a young runaway from a plantation in Virginia, whom they'd raise as part of their family until her marriage in 1874 to Carpenter Thomas Lawrence, whose works can still be viewed across their own property. Eventually, the family home was passed down to the Kelton's son, Frank, who would marry one Isabella Morrow Coit before trading houses with his brother, Edwin, in order to procure more space for his family. Ed's daughter, Grace Bird Kelton, would reside in the aged abode until her death in 1975, marking her as the last member of the family to own the property, and after which, its bounds were left to the Columbus Foundation, who would lease the space to the Junior League of Columbus under which the premises was fully restored. In the present, the Kelton House Museum and Garden remains open and in operation, offering a wealth of educational materials, breathtaking scenery, and, as an interesting side note, a collection of furniture that's actually 80-90% to authentic Kelton family decor. In more recent times, the Kelton House and its grounds have built a reputation as a place filled with abundant supernatural activity, and most local legends claim the expanse is haunted by the spirits of the Keltons, of those they harbored, and of the many who loved the abode in life, with those frequenting the property reporting objects sighted moving on their own, extreme temperature fluctuations, and the constant feelings of being watched or followed by a presence unseen. Sadly, in 1864, the Kelton's eldest son, Oscar, was killed in action in Mississippi at only 18 years of age. His fellow soldiers would bury him under a tree and mark his grave with a sign. And 18 months following, when Fernando discovered the location of his son's remains, he would go to retrieve the body. However, it's told that in transit home, an accident overturned the cart carrying said remains, spilling them onto the ground while issuing Fernando a nasty bump on his head. While he did manage to gather up his son's body, it said the grisly state of the remains, coupled with emotional distress of the moment, left a lasting scar on the poor father, and possibly resulting from his head wound, that the man suffered from dizziness, weakness, and migraines for the remainder of his days. Even more tragic, in 1866, Fernando was overcome by one such spell while at his downtown Columbus office, and when he went to his window for some air, accidentally fell out and down three stories to the ground, after which he was carried home, where he later passed on. The entity of Oscar has been sighted smoking about the grounds, dressed in full uniform and donning a proud look upon his face, while Fernando's presence has been known to harass those he doesn't want in his abode by whispering in their ears or by bumping into them in the hallways. When Fernando actually manifests, it says he does so as a tall, handsome, older gent in a flannel shirt that's been known to disappear when approached or addressed. Lastly, the spirits both of Sophia and of Grace Bird have also been encountered about, Grace always seemingly keeping an eye on those wondering, and Sophia often manifesting to talk with children or spied gazing from upper windows, always clad in black. Both of these ghostly gals are recognized for their friendly and often comedic natures, and have been known to appear for events, parties, and weddings, as well as for photobombing what would otherwise be considered picture-perfect moments. Number 1. Fort Scott National Historic Site Fort Scott National Historic Site, located off of Old Fort Boulevard out of Fort Scott, Kansas, is a landmark location that, through the Civil War, was utilized to recruit, train, and deploy African-American soldiers across the state, which, incidentally, was actually the first northern state to welcome freed men to fight with open arms. The defense would serve as a base for both the 1st and 2nd Kansas Colored Infantry, and today, its grounds are certified as an official national Underground Railroad Network to Freedom site. Historically, Fort Scott was first established with construction started in 1842, right along a military route as a safe zone for the area's rapidly growing settler populace. In 1850, while the fort was still incomplete, officials would order no further construction be performed on the locale, and by the time the defense was polished up and declared finished, it was all but obsolete and was left abandoned by the military to stand the tests of the elements and time. 
Through the American Civil War, Fort Scott was renewed as a military post, and in 1861, Union forces would occupy and ready the expanse. On the eve of the Emancipation Proclamation taking effect, which occurred on January 1st of 1863, it's documented that African-American businessman, military recruiting officer, and conductor aboard the Underground Railroad William Matthews out of Leavenworth, who'd formerly organized African-American units, recruited men for the 1st Regiment Kansas Colored State Militia, and who held the honors of being one of only 125 commissioned black men in the Union, would participate in what were documented as legendary celebrations at Fort Scott, for which he was joined both by his brothers from battle and by men and women of all ethnicities and from all wakes of life, who'd all fought to support a more unified tomorrow. By the spring of 1873, the U.S. Army would withdraw its troops from the weathered fort permanently. Until around 1965, the site was left abandoned and would fall into disrepair, and on October 19th of 1978, Fort Scott would be honored as a National Historic Site under the supervision of the National Park Service, resulting in the ongoing preservation of its roughly 17-acre bounds. Fort Scott National Historic Site remains open into the present, offering a range of touring choices and options for exploring the park either in person or even online. Over its lengthy existence, Fort Scott has been surrounded in a number of local legends telling a purported paranormal activity, with those braving its bounds reporting extreme cold spots, strange patches of fog that descend upon the area alone, and encounters with both the apparitions of soldiers in full garb and with shadowy figures that are suspected to be the souls of those formerly enslaved individuals who sought refuge within the defense. Near the cell blocks and stables, groupings of spectral officers have been sighted doing rounds or attending work tasks from lives long lost, while phantom recruits have been spied on the lawn, marching or seemingly training. And these ghostly soldiers are said to appear so real that they're often mistaken for reenactments by unsuspecting onlookers, who later find to their surprise that no performances were scheduled for that specific time or date. Across the whole of Fort Scott grounds, the most haunted haunted point is rumored to be that of the officer's quarters, which, for a time, also served as an orphanage, and those who have frequented them have reported the disembodied crying, laughter, and chatter of children, as well as encounters with ghostly silhouettes that wonder about. One popular legend tells that long ago, an officer housed within these quarters was showing off for his wife and, while riding up to the building on its left side, accidentally shot himself, after which his wife embraced him until he died in her arms. To date, several have cited the apparition of a beautiful woman bearing a distressed look, who's often heard crying from just out of view. Lastly, reported across the whole of the Fort Scott site and confined to no area in particular, are the scents of foods cooking with no discernible source, disembodied chatter and old-timey music heard on the winds, and the phantom sounds of a grand party that was most certainly held many years past and continues on into eternity from the other side. Taking its fascinating history and wealth of associated ghost stories and local legends into account, we felt the Fort Scott historic site was the perfect choice as the most haunted stop along America's ever-legendary Underground Railroad. Thanks for joining us for this list of some of the most haunted places on the Underground Railroad. If you enjoyed our histories and scary stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. Until next time.